shot of the new Praetorian. <laughs> the ogre has asked me to mention that he is very humbled by the guests that show up on his show. And two on this latest live stream were MCJK in the incomparable Cabbage Patch Bastard. So here's part one of part two. And it will only be these two. The best of In the Vault. Here comes MCJK! I, I'm not going to kiss your ass all day, but you <laughs> handled that stuff so well, dude. Well, let's just see if this microphone works. <laughs> Something new for me. Boy, you and play you and plain speech are really going at it. And I've got to say live right now, I'm going to be perfectly honest. And I, man, plain speech, we're friends, so don't be upset with me. But brother, in fact, I'm just going to put it this way, so but everybody will read between the lines. You know how to debate, MCJ. You, you know what you're doing. You know how to do it well. You also know whether you were right or wrong. I'm not going to say who was right or wrong in that conversation. Either way, you certainly do have a way about you, don't you, sir? Well, yeah, that's true. But the, the thing that worries me about these kind of uh, th that kind of format was it's hard to um, explain things textually and not yes, under, you get, and not, you get the and not get the feel from the person whether they're truly understanding what you're trying to say, where you're truly yes, trying to Yes, you can get the from. ethos, but you can't get the pathos. That's the problem with text. And you can get the ethos of it. You can get the, you know, what am I trying to say? You can, I'm trying to say it more simply. You can get what you mean by it with no feeling. Correct. And so without that feeling, though, when you're trying to talk to another person and you're trying to explain something, how often and how easy is it to lose focus into you're thinking the person is doing this because you're analyzing what's being said all right but you're also picking up clues into how they're feeling about something to say okay no he's not he's not understanding or she's not understanding what i'm trying to put across here um i also to be honest am probably a bit older than most of you so i have a different perspective from that regard as well there, there was only one thing that he said <clears throat> that actually perturbed um from an emotional standpoint and it's not something most people pick up on all right and, and the reason for this is i remember being in the third grade and in the third grade um my first day of school we got our, all our books just like we always do all the different uh you know subjects we're gonna have by the end of the week i'd already read the history book the entire I believe book you. and well, I believe you. It, it's not because you know it was that easy or anything else it's because i actually do have a really deep love personal love it's not it's not a, a uh, an expression of anything else a personal love of history and so i always love history i've always read history i'm very well read in history and especially for an american which always surprises people and my colleagues that come from uh, across the pond or uh, come from asia <laughs> that i can actually uh discuss certain aspects of their of their cultures from a historical standpoint Right? That doesn't mean I'm a history expert. In fact, if anybody ever claims that they're a history expert, run away from them because history is so broad that you'll never find somebody that's a true expert in all of history. It's just a matter of whether or not you love it or don't love it, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I go, yeah, don't let anybody stop you. Finish your idea. But so if are, are you tr going to tie in your knowledge of history with this Vault 7 is what I'm hoping for, sir? Oh, yeah. And what oh, should, yeah. I, should I just call you? In, 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 okay. Let's let's uh let's uh. I'm gonna let's, call let's you take... MC for short, if that's all right with you, sir. That, that's fine. <laughs> okay, then continue, let's... MC. So I. Okay, first of all, when you start talking about the agencies, the intel agencies, okay, the FBI, the CIA, and and the NSA, there there's several things that are very important to understand from a mission perspective that they are were created for, why they were created. Okay, uh, what their jobs and their mission titles are. Um, with the NSA, the, the, the one thing that's critical to remember is that they are a part of the Department of Defense. They're not an agency that exists outside of that, all right, and outside of that sphere. This is why you will see whoever's in charge of the NSA, all right, being 
a member of the uniform services. All right, he's it, who's on active duty. He's he's not somebody that they're picking some civilian that they're picking to say, okay, you're in charge of the NSA. Unlike the CIA, and unlike uh, uh, the FBI. All right, and this goes back to to their mission. Okay, now the just keep just keep that kind of in mind in a broad kind of sense. Okay, so let's go back to what their role is their role is enemy communications okay they the let's leave it leave it as that okay um so they need some kind of technical capability okay this what has happened now and what we're, what is really dangerous with the, with the vault 7 stuff isn't the capability of this all right it's the bleed over of this where they're intermixing the roles of what the CIA is doing and the NSA is doing, and they're combining it all. And, it, and it's, I'm not talking about information sharing from the perspective of just uh, a specific information you're sharing, but in a generic. And MC, MC, I want you to go on, but please unpack bleed over like you are as well as you can so everybody understands what you mean by that phrase, sir. That's so astute. <laughs> okay, but by bleed over, I mean when you have very rigidly defined roles. Well, right, here, here's an, uh, let me see if I can give a good analogy, right? In 1946, it was determined that we're going to have missiles in the future and that these missiles would be, have most likely nuclear weapons. A fight began uh, within the different departments between the Navy, the Army, um, as to who was going to control that? Who was going to get the lion's share of who was going to control the missiles that were coming up? The government decided, okay, what we'll do is we'll define another group that will have that role, all right, so that you'll have an army, an air force, and a navy. All right, and they put this into law. And they said the air force is the one that's going to be responsible for the long range ballistic missiles. I see the Right. This is this is going to get this was to to stop the infighting that was happening between the, the Navy and the Army. All right. The this created another fight, actually. And that fight was, well, wait a minute. The Army's got everything. Then it's got the ability. They got planes. They're going to have all this other stuff. Uh, so that's when they came back and said the Air Force can only have or I mean, the Army can only have very limited fixed wing aircraft it can't develop jets <laughs> it can't develop all these other all these other tools all right um so they were trying to create defined roles for the separate services all right the same things happened and happened with the intel services all right there were very specific roles that they were supposed to be engaging in all right now there's one role that was really really poorly defined of all this and that is okay you've got the cia the cia is supposed to be doing intel on foreign elements that are dangerous to the united states the fbi was going to be doing intel okay on u.s targets for all right they're supposed to be the ones being a law enforcement service they were part of the law enforcement group all right the nsa their targets were enemy military, all right, and associated roles in there. And in addition to that, they were the ones that were going to do communications. Okay. So how does, how, knowing all this now, all right, when you have a target in the CIA that you want to look at, okay, what you're using your equipment for, all right, uh, you may not have the best equipment for that kind of a person to, to best utilize when you're trying to target that individual or that group of group. Okay. At which point you could make a request. This is how it's supposed to work. You could make a request to see whether or not the other services would be willing to provide that, assuming that this was considered legal, all right, by the lawyers and by the FISA courts. All right, which were uh, at the time initially not that broad based. Well, and they're a bullshit star chamber anyway, sir. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> it became worse with the Patriot Act. Okay. Mm. 
now and the main reason for that was the Patriot excuse me the Patriarch's purpose at this point was to increase data sharing between the organization so they started tearing down a lot of these roles now and you started seeing mixing and matching and bleed over into away from this was my assigned role here well now i'm doing a little bit of this over here and now i'm doing a little bit of this over there and they didn't need to go outside to get permission to do this anymore no okay now why am i bringing all this up <clears throat> the reason is is let's talk about the the revelations um, from vault seven of the capabilities to be honest the capabilities those capabilities of bugging people that have been around for a long time that's nothing new the actual capability of bugging isn't the the only real difference from a technological perspective that things have changed over time all right comes in storage the ability to store data mm. Okay, and this is where the the intermixing and the bleed over in these roles really comes into full comes to four. Okay, to where now wait a minute here you're not supposed to be and legally you're not supposed to store this data. All right, there were very specific rules about and, and they were for for those of us that worked under the wire right. We had to take uh, uh, classes every year to reinforce these are the legal rules you are allowed to follow. I'm and ignorant they, on what you meant by working under the wire, sir. Working with my clearance. Uh, okay, so in other words, you're telling me, and I don't want you to dox or anything, but you were saying you were speaking from a, a perspective of experience. Yes, in this. but this is this is okay. I'm, I'm, in this case, I'm talking about something from personal experience. Yeah, I'm not going to prod you to even say what agency or anything else, sir. Just continue. I, I'm so honored to have you on here. Okay. So one of the things that was repeatedly hammered into us was is that you can't store this. And what they meant by store it is place it in a place where you then could go back and go through it. Now, if you, it went somewhere and you didn't know what it was and you could never find it, that's something else. I mean, that's that was not a, that was not considered storage storage was you had collected it and then you placed it so that you could collate that data at any future time now the technology has allowed you to do this previously <clears throat> before in the 1940s what how could you record things you, you basically had the, the 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 germans came up with the initial part of the reel to reel audio tape so things had to come back into uh audio and how clear it was. You could also use records. Everyone had an LP, remember? Right. So so the first innovation for technology there was to take that real to real technology, all right, and now be able to place not audio on it, but RF on it. Okay. Now why? Because RF, because of its higher frequencies, I can actually store more data on a piece of tape. Just right? radio so, frequency data. Yes. All right, so you're taking uh, radio frequencies, you're manipulating them, for lack of a better term. I don't want to get too far into the weed. Um, so that you could take an entire bandwidth of the RF spectrum, or the radio frequency spectrum, and record it. Okay, then you could sift through it. Okay, now, doing that is tedious. Doing that takes time, and doing that is you know, initially required a person to actually listen in. And how much tape do you think that takes? It takes quite a bit of tape. So in order to utilize this, what they did was, is after they were done listening to it, they threw it through a degausser and it was gone. <laughs> and these degaussers are huge. I, I mean, they are just absolutely- A magnet, massive. a magnet. Yes. You are throwing yes. it through- I just want to make sure you're, you're talking magnet. at a level that may be above some people's heads. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, no, no, I no, continue, sir. I just have to ask you to clarify sometimes when I think maybe some folks wouldn't understand you. Go ahead, because I'm going to no, repost no. this, man, and it'll get some views. So when you send it through through the giant magnet, all right, that's cycling back and forth, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times a second, all right, you basically erase the data, okay? And in fact, those magnets could still be used today to get rid of hard drives. You, you'll race all the all your drives right now that are currently being utilized with the exception of the new solid state drives all right would be instantly wiped out okay the next so technology the, however go ahead 
This is all analog data, though, isn't it? Y yes, that is correct. This is all analog, and that's what I was getting to. <laughs> the next yeah, and as soon as he's done, Tigerson, I'm going to give you at least three uninterrupted <laughs> minutes. I got to let uh, this gentleman go. He knows what yeah. the hell he's talking about I mean, right now. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. So the next innovation was the ability to take that analog data and digitize it. Now, at the time that this took place, you still didn't have a lot of storage place. If you remember, a floppy disk, all right, had 120K and it was 18 inches. Okay. That, as that shrank down, the amount of data you could store, all right, dramatically increased. With that technology also came the ability of using computers, for lack of a better term, to scan through that data. Now, storage which used to be very expensive and almost impossible to utilize has now become cheap and your ability to collate that data quickly all right has increased tremendously without actually adding any new people does everybody that, are, so, are you following oh yeah and not yeah now tie this in sir because i i know where you're going with this and i'm just showing a sand disk this is 32 gigs <laughs> Okay, just to let you know, the first uh, computer that I, that I played with uh, for the military it was a 8K core memory board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and okay. I got to say really quick, wait, I'm gonna let you go, but I see you there, Philip. You'll be right after Mr. Targles, targets, uh, Tigerson. Please continue, sir. Okay, so the danger was when, when they started under the Patriot Act, allowing them to, to collect this data and store it, okay, and then tore down the wall with the bleed over to where people could have access to it. They had no business even going into it. You've already committed several crimes here and they were getting away with it, All right? This comes down now to the Snowden revelations, okay? Um, Snowden, what, what his revelations let everybody know was we were doing things or, or they, things were being done in this collection, which was sp supposed to be and legally illegal, all right? Now, first of all, anybody who tells you that the only thing that they were looking at was metadata is F, <laughs> they're full of crap. That's BS. The fact is, is that they were not storing metadata, they were storing raw data. And then they were using Everything. metadata to determine what was in there. This is highly, mm. highly illegal, okay? Mm. Why, now, sir, why would that be illegal? Do we have an amendment that covers it? I hate to keep going to this guy, no, but he's fascinating. Constitutionally, me. we don't have the right to collect data and store it on U.S. persons. No, under the Fourth Amendment, that, that that's a that violation of your right to feel safe and secure in your person, property, that, effects, and, and papers. That is correct. Do you um, okay. Thank you, know sir. about the... Um, oh, this is a thing we've got in the U.K. called the um, 1998 Data Protection Act. What about it? That 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 was you for you, to, sir. He wants to know if you know anything. Go yeah, ahead. Do you happen to know about it? It's just um. Um. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know anything was... about the specifics of, of of the Europeans. Um, yeah, sure. However, there's something even even frightening about that, and that okay, is. Okay, wait a second. Now wait a second. Go. You can say this, but then I want you to put a point on that pencil you were just sharpening, man, because you were killing it. So go ahead and answer that question, and go back to that original thought if you still have it, Mr. MC. All right, the, 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 with our quote unquote allies, when we, we decided that certain allies are, um, we're going to share information with, with the Intel communities back and forth. One of the aspects that became readily apparent was the fact that in the US constitution, the US constitution refers to what? US citizens. Now, US citizens have been, has been defined as any, U.S. citizen and any U.S. person to include U.S. corporations or agencies that operate out of the United States. All right, as as that are operating out of the United States. So, all the constitutional protections only protected those individuals. Now, what does that leave? Well, that leaves a, a quite a big hole there. That if your ally, your intel ally, says we'd like you to, to look at our own citizens and then hand that data over constitutionally, this is not illegal for us and vice versa, which means if, if we go to MI6 and say, we'd like you to look at this US person, do you have any data on them? From a constitutional standpoint, we haven't violated the law. 
Oh my goodness, but it's really? So, so that's yeah. what's killing me. So you're saying they can actually use it and use the Constitution say we have it. And listen, Mr. MC, I, I've got to let Mr. Tigerson or Mr. Phillips say something here in a second. They, we've all been so patient, but I do want to bounce it back here very quick. Pardon me, sir? I'm, so, I'm sorry for monopolizing your time. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, I, I'll be honest. I wish I, and we're this is with all due respect to you two boys, I wish I would have only invited you because you're blowing my mind right now and you are a wealth of knowledge and experience that most of us will never have and the idea that you're on my puny channel i'm not going to suck you you, you're, you know what right now but i'm just going to say <laughs> i'm humbled and thank you gentlemen for being patient so now i will be quiet please continue sir if either one of you two want to jump in and you'll also notice boys i put something in the sidebar comment for you if you care to look at that philip just say hi and then mr mc if you'll continue hi Okay, we can hear you. So Good. just let him finish. And if you boys have any comments or questions about what he's saying, please feel free to jump in like I am now. And maybe we can even keep up with this genius gentleman. Sir, if I could ask, and if, if you don't want to, don't even answer it. Just go right back to where you were as if I didn't ask it. What agency were you with? Were you in the military or in a government agency? I was in the United States Army. Okay, that's enough said. I'm not going to press you. Nobody wants to dox you. This is just amazing. Continue, sir. No, no, no. I, I mean, I have no problem talking about some parts of my aspect of the Army. Um, it's quite an interesting story for, for myself. Um, but that's a yeah. That's but a, we were talking about a, this bleed over thing. for another whole day. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about this bleed, bleed over thing, and we got off a little bit in the weeds. So if you want to pick up right where your last idea was, unless Philip or Mr. Tigerson has a, okay. a question, you know, now, go right ahead. I mentioned, and I just want to go back to this point. I mentioned the fact that we could share intel back and forth with other uh, foreign agencies back and forth. Okay. Now the reality of doing that was a bit. Um, narrower than than what i hinted at okay it wasn't a broad-based thing because we're not sharing broad-based intel it, it had to do with if they were looking at someone very specific okay and if you've if you've taken a look at and if you've watched um uh the press and what gets leaked to the press and where it gets leaked at this is why you will see things that get reported on the bbc or got gets reported in the guardian on certain individuals in the U.S. about outing them and doing things that are nefarious, okay? Because somebody and it and it could very well have happened simply because a U.S. target, we couldn't do it; they were allowed to do it. Now back to bleed over. That was all in the past. The problem became with all this technology was, like I said, remember now you could collect it and you could store it. All right, and then you could sift it. Okay, the ability to sift because it's just on a computer now became broad based. Now you've already violated things because they've told everybody, you've been told you're not allowed to collect. Okay, the Patriot Act, Patriot Act allowed them to collect it and store it. That was one of the most dangerous, heinous things that happened. Now, here, 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 here. Snowden out of that, and I had no problem with him outing that. The problem was the way he did it. I wasn't, we were not able to pinpoint who these people were that were committing this crime so we could put them in jail. So what's the consequence? In their world, nothing changed. Why should they stop? You've just thrown away one of your checks and balances because of the method that he chose. Almost emboldened them. Well, yeah, well, I mean, well, honestly, what happened? Did you see anybody get fired? Well, they outed Nothing. they outed a, a, a security agency. Did that that, that security agency uh, or a contractor rather? Did that contractor collapse and and was never allowed any more security jobs? No, it's still doing it. So nothing effectively happened, and that's a direct result for how he chose to do it. And that's why I've made some of the comments that he made. The, the other thing, of course, was that that really rankles me is if he had just outed that. OK, that's one thing. What he also did was turn over other data that was actually what our mission is supposed to be to target these individuals. All right. In these targeted countries. So, and, and I want to I want to get you and I'm not just going to try to tell you off, but I've got to let one of these two gentlemen say a little oh. something in there. Right. They're probably going to be like, let him talk because he said you are on a fucking roll, sir. I want kind of a verbal. A commitment from you to be on the we're all fucked live stream 
uh, if not the 21st, the 4th of next month, would you consider that? Not a commitment to do it, but would you cons commit to considering that? Oh, no, I'll consider that. Well, I should have quit you, baby. Should have quit you a long, long time ago. Goodbye.